Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is a Wednesday, and all of our guests today, including Farhan, standing by, brought to you by the Alberni Power and Marine RPM Group, located in Port Alberni. Alberni Power and Marine is one of Vancouver Island's most trusted boat dealerships, the largest Mercury Marine dealership in Canada. Their service team just won for a fourth straight year a customer satisfaction index score above the national average. Make your appointment for the 2023 boating season, Rick, at albernipowermarine.com. Calm. We were talking about the Campbell River <laughs> Storm, uh, and I'm, I said, you know, I'm not so sure I love the name mm-hmm. Storm. I love, the, love those jerseys. Yeah. And we're, we asked the question, how many storms are out there? That was part of my... Uh, Sports teams, yeah. Yeah, part, part of my... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Part of my complaint, and we forgot about the Seattle Storm. Yeah, it was Sue Bird. We, yeah, but it was Sue Bird, uh, the Guelph Storm, mm-hmm. Ontario OHL. Hockey League. Yeah, yep. Uh, Minor hockey, South Delta, the South Delta storm. Washington, yeah, they, and, they're the storm. Apparently, there's a Saskatchewan storm as well. Yeah, yeah. that's Portland storm and yeah. football. There's a, there's a yeah. lot of storms out there. So you stand yeah. correct. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm in the middle of a storm because of you two. Anyways. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you who's in the middle of a storm. It's uh, Francesco Aquilini. It's uh, yeah. well documented here to uh, uh, join us or maybe to talk about uh, that from TSN. Farhan Lalji, how are you, sir? Boy, I'm not sure I want to talk about that. The Squalicum Storm, which is a high school in Bellingham that my son's team Whoa, plays Qualicum, against. And yeah. I'm a, a Squalicum with an S. And I'm oh, going to wind up going yeah. to Tampa for the storm. But well, hopefully after the storm is all over with Tampa Bay taking on oh, okay. Kansas City on Sunday. Unless, of course, that game gets moved. So we'll see. We'll see how that one plays out. Yes, exactly. Um, it's wreaking havoc with the Tampa Bay uh, practices. Are they, they're in Miami. Mm-hmm. Are they not uh, working out there, Brian? Yeah, they've gone to Miami because uh, the Dolphins are playing a Thursday night game, so they're going to be uh, vacating their facility for most of the week. So they're going to be there, and then you haven't made a decision yet if it's going to get moved and if it does where, because it could uh, – unlikely to go to Miami just because they don't want to put additional resources from the state into that. So could be New Orleans, could be Minnesota hmm. uh, are the places that they're looking at. But, um, you know, they, they could wait until as late as Friday before making a decision on moving that. Uh, Chiefs and Bucks. Simon uh, Fraser so. could have cons- could have considered naming their school the Storm. Yes, we're, we're back to that. Well, well, you know, now I'm thinking about it. There's a lot of you names know. that could have been better. Yeah, on top of Burnaby Mountain, yeah. there's a storm or two uh, up there. Uh, so Chiefs and Bucks Sunday. Uh, on your Twitter account, you tweeted out just how bad uh, the Broncos and 49ers were last Sunday oh. uh, night. What are you seeing from Russell Wilson, Nathaniel Hackett, and those Broncos? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure it's quite meshed yet in terms of offensively. Now, I think from Nathaniel Hackett's perspective, I think the bigger challenges he's dealing with are game management and the responsibilities that come with being a head coach. I think that's where he's taken most of his criticism. But as far as, you know, Russell Wilson and, and learning a new offense, which is something he really hasn't had to do, um, because even though he's been through some coordinators with the Seahawks, um, the offenses haven't necessarily changed significantly, right? I mean, the play calling emphasis was supposed to change, but it was still Pete Carroll's identity. It was still run first. And and I got to be honest, I wasn't sure this was going to turn into what Russell Wilson wanted to begin with, because mm. if you look at Nathaniel Hackett and all the, the principles that they've run in the, the Shanahan tree and what the McVeighs and that school of coaches has done, it's all been run first. It's all been a bootleg game and play action game and, Really a lot of similar concepts to what they were doing in Seattle, but nonetheless, between terminology and personnel and and everything that goes with that, it just hasn't fit. Russell hasn't looked comfortable. Uh, The offensive line Mm -hmm. hasn't played up to expectations. So I think because of a number of reasons, it it just hasn't been there. He was supposed to be the final piece, but it hasn't gone as seamlessly as it did a year ago with Matt Stafford and two years ago with Tom Brady and those guys getting the new teams. Farhan, you're a football guy. Did you have a problem watching Tua stumble around and, and then get go into concussion protocol and get back to work? Miami versus Buffalo yeah. last weekend. It was it was awkward for sure, and I, I was left with an uncomfortable feeling watching it happen. Um, you know, is the explanation that they gave Mike McDaniel and the, and the front office of the Dolphins uh, that it was a back injury and that you know that led to some discomfort? It's plausible, you know. Certainly, mm-hmm. there there was a there are independent 
neurologists and concussion experts involved with these decisions for every team, right? So uh, it is it is possible that it did happen that way. But certainly when it happened, I was totally uncomfortable watching it play out. There's no doubt. Uh, football closer to home, Farhan. Uh, first of all, just an awful effort by the Lions. Two and out, two and out, two and out, I think, on their first 11 possessions. They only crossed uh, uh, Calgary at, at, uh, at midfield three times. That's it. Uh, what's got to What's got to change here? You can't do that. You're going to drive fans away if you if you're going to have that sort of an offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, there's bad offense that um, you know that is inconsistent, right? Big play turnover. Uh, at least that could leave you somewhat entertained. That was flat out boring, uninspiring. Put you to sleep offense. Yep, absolutely. And as bad as bad as the offense has been at times since Nathan Rourke uh, has has been out, uh, you know, and it's been four games, and it's been really bad in three of the games. Yeah. Um, that was the first time where the offense actually compromised the defense, right? Where the defense was left on the field the entire game. And you mm-hmm. could see on that yeah. final run by Peyton Logan where he broke a bunch of tackles and the defense finally wore down. And I kind of predicted early in the third quarter that this was inevitable, that it was going to happen if they didn't get some support from their offense. And to see Vernon Adams look as comfortable as he did in Calgary and as unsure of what he was seeing in BC – That was the surprising part because I got to tell you, even though it was a season high five sacks allowed, I would hang at least three of those on Vernon Mm -hmm. Adams, right? Because the offensive line did not look as bad as the five sacks indicated. There was time, there were people, and he just was not comfortable with what he was seeing. And hopefully he can take another step this week against Ottawa because it'll probably be a different look. I mean, I would expect a lot more pressure with the Mike Benavides defense. But, you know, if I'm watching that, I would probably just rush three and four and drop back into different coverages and expect that he's not going to pull the trigger again. Farhan, the Canucks owner in the news, uh, obviously not a good mm-hmm. look. Uh, your thoughts on what's happening there? Boy, that's a tough one to uh, to opine on, right? I mean, if any of those allegations are true, um, if, just so yeah. disappointing on so many levels, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, I, I'm certainly not going to refer to his children as kids currently because they're all above 20. But certainly if the allegations, based on the allegations, it would have happened when they were kids. Um, so, yeah, like those are so difficult to comment on, right? Because if there's truth to any of those um you know, you, you hope he's held accountable. But again, he denies them vehemently, which which many people going through that do. So I just I don't want to I don't want to pass judgment. I, I don't want to get ahead of this and give a hot yeah. take and do any of that because mm-hmm. it's just not responsible. Right. I mean, you, you got to wait for that to play out in a court of law and see what happens at the end of it all. And, um, you know, but certainly just the allegations themselves aren't a good look for Francesco Aquilini or the organization as a whole. Yeah. Enjoy Florida or wherever you're going uh, this coming weekend, uh, Farhan. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring a paddle and I'll bring hats. And, <laughs> yeah, good yeah. idea. Good idea. Not to make a lot of it, but uh, safe travels. Yeah, I know. Hey, and look, get to the Lions. Actually, if you don't get to the Lions game, I'll be doing play-by-play on Friday. So listen, oh, one wow, way or the okay. other, consume yep. the Lions on Friday. And Canucks on Thursday. That should be fun. We haven't even really talked about the Canucks training nope. camp and preseason game yet, but next time. Yep, you bet. Farhan, thanks for this. Appreciate it.